Hello and uh, welcome to another sort of tutorial episode where we celebrate the life and the music of Chris Squire. On episode number three that I did some weeks ago, I asked for some information uh, about the Rene bass, the eight string bass. Uh, and I was contacted by Eric Rennie and Eric kindly shared with, with us uh, some uh, details about the construction of the Rennie bass and he also shared some memories about his collaboration with Chris Squire. And this episode will be dedicated to the anatomy of the Rennie bass. In the summer of 1976, uh, Eric Rennie from the Greater Chicago area uh, had three basses, a precision bass, a jazz bass and a Rickenbacker, uh, which he thought uh, would be enough for his musical prospects. Uh, then, out of curiosity, he started to design um, in a scale drawing uh, what would become his first bass. Uh, at first, he thought that uh, he could have a luthier to, to build his bass, but then he thought that he should make his own bass and then start a career of his own. And that's how it started the project to Eric to, to build his first bass. In the year of 1977, uh, Yes were touring in Chicago and by chance uh, Eric Rennie met Chris Squire in the street and presented himself as a bass builder. And later that day, um, Chris Squire allowed Eric to look at his bass rig uh, for the show. Um, and three months later, Eric started to be interested in eight string basses and he decided that he would want to build a bass for Chris Squire. So he took on his four string bass project that he had already built and um, he adapted that bass to an eight string by changing the headstock and by changing, adapting the bridge of the bass to, to be an eight string bridge. On the afternoon of June the 9th of 1979, Eric presented his eight string bass to Chris Squire at the International Amphitheater in Chicago. Eric recalls the premiere of his bass in the hands of Chris Squire during the sound check and the show. The first comment Chris made about the bass during the sound check was very wide neck, which led Eric Rennie to think that he had failed. Indeed, the neck was a bit wider than a Rickenbacker, but Eric had overdone the job in his attempt to mimic the somewhat rectangular shape of the back of the neck of the Rickenbacker. Then Chris mentioned he liked the way Eric scaled the string pairings. Chris and soon after sound engineer Nigel Luby both remarked, you can really hear that it is an eight string bass. Eric also recalls that the first identifiable piece of music that Chris Squire played on his eight string bass during the sound check was by Henry Mancini, the Peter Gunn theme, which morphed into Roundabout. Eric also recalls that uh, Chris also played some um, passage of a song that later would become Hearts. Chris used it for the first time that night on Roundabout. The show was broadcast live on FM radio from Chicago. It was a circular stage, 
Steve Howe is facing the opposite direction of Chris Squire, who was having trouble attaching the strap to his new bass. So Chris starts roundabout three seconds late. In retrospect, it makes the debut of the bass more dramatic. Eric further added that to the best of his knowledge, that day marked the transition between eight string basses from the Rickenbacker to the Rennie. Chris later gave his former eight string bass to his friend, filmmaker Vincent Gallo. Now let's take a look at several technical aspects of this unique bass as described by Eric Rennie. Neck. Eric used the metric system when designing the bass, so these are not conversions. The scale length is 86 cm, about 4 mm shorter than a Fender 34 inches, which is 86.36 cm. The neck stock is 60 mm wide through body and tapers to 45 mm at the nut, slightly wider than the standard Rickenbacker. The neck wood is primarily purple heart, 25 mm thick, sold in half, with 10 mm of hard maple in between. Fretboard. The fretboard is ebony, 5 mm thick in the center over another 5 mm piece of maple only visible from the side of the fretboard and by the neck pickup. Headstock. The face of the headstock is made of bird's eye maple. Eric Rennie describes its shape either as a screw, a soft serve ice cream or a flame. Body. The front and back of the body is cocobolo, with another 10 mm piece of maple sandwiched in between. The semicircle was cut out of the bottom to put the strap button there to shift the center of gravity. For better balance, Eric stretched the upper horn as close to the 12th fret as much as he could without making it look odd. Eric decided first that the pickup dimensions would be 80 mm by 35 mm, then worked with the pickup designer to make his own pickups. Eric wanted flat frequency response and clean sound. The active circuit includes a Bartolini The Chip 2 stereo preamp with no equalization. Wiring. The arrangement of the electronic controls is quite elaborate. The pickups go first to a top 4 pull switch, which changes the coils in both pickups simultaneously from series to parallel. Then the output of that switch goes to a 4 pull 5 position rotary switch. This combines the pickups going clockwise on the first position series, which outputs to the neck pickup pots on the second position, the neck pickup only, on the third position, both pickups in parallel, which is stereo, on the fourth position, the bridge pickup, on the fifth position, series out of phase, which uh, outputs to the bridge pickup pots. There are two volume controls and one master tone, like the jazz bass. The tone control is two potentiometers stacked. The bottom switch turns off and bypasses the preamp, which allows you to play the bass without using the preamp. The middle switch makes the parallel output out of phase, which according to Eric has a real thin, useless sound. As the bass became ready, about one week before showing it to Chris, this option was not removed. The arrangement of the controls is Eric's main regret. Chris Squire asked Eric on the first night of the show for a recommendation for the wiring setup and uh, the recommendation was that he would use the, the pickup coils in series 
with the both pickups in parallel for the stereo uh, for the stereo output uh, with the, the preamp turned on. Hardware. The bridge is a Leo Kwan badass. The front is grounded down slightly from 2 inches to 50 millimeters to keep with the metric theme. Eric heard while he was designing the bass that you need to have uh, individual adjustments for each of the eight strings, like on this bass, uh, Zon Sonus. Uh, but he was sure that uh, a proper intonation could be achieved by having just one adjustment for each pair. Chris Choir mentioned in the Premier Guitars rig rundown video that Eric's bass intonates correctly up to the 24th fret and he even said that he considered that to be a miracle giving evidence to Eric's challenge that you can uh, correctly intonate an 8 string bass by having just one adjustment by pair of strings and uh, consequently that you can simplify um, significantly the, the, the string setup process. The tuning gears are by Schaller, 4 for bass and 4 guitar tuners for the octave strings. Strings The strings initially installed for the sound check were GHS strings. In the future, Chris would use the regular Rotosound 8 string set. Eric calculated what the ideal string gauges should be based on frequency and carefully cut slots so that the space between the strings was proportional to the string gauges. When Chris came up with a new tuning, the fifth tuning, he might have considered bigger strings, but the strings might not fit in their slots and cause problems. Richard Davis, Squire's bass tech, informed Eric about a new tuning on a later tour and recently confirmed that they simply detuned the original strings to fifths on the two top pairs. So we have come to the end of this sort of tutorial um, dedicated to the Rennie eight string bass. I would like to thank Eric Rennie for his uh, precious contribution to this episode. And uh, I would like to invite all the viewers to vote on uh, which name uh, do you think the Rani Base headstock should be connected with? Um, remember that uh, Eric said that the shape of the headstock was something like a soft serve ice cream or a flame or a screw. Tell us what you think. What's your favorite name? You can also invent one for yourself uh, and let me know, please. <laughs> So uh, until next time, bye-bye, and as always, thank you, Chris.